Hi everybody, Geezer Tony here once again. A few weeks back, I made a chipping video, um, impromptu, that went over big and a lot of people were interested. And during that video, I announced that I was going to do a short game series in the spring. Well, spring is here. This will be the first edition of the short game series. I almost didn't want to post this video because of the audio. I was going to redo it. Now, as, as you may know, I, I do things impromptu. I don't have a script. I just kind of talk as I go along. And I watch the videos, and they seem pretty good, and the, the content in them was very good. So I decided to go ahead and post that, even though the audio is not great. What happened was the microphones quit working, and I had to use the phone's microphone, which allows a lot of background noise in. But it's still good enough, I think, that uh, you'll get the message. So let's just get right in here. So let's just get right into episode one. I'm not sure how many there will be, possibly three or four. So here's episode one coming right up. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about the standard chipping motion again, as was in my original video. And then we're going to talk about how to use it with these three different hole placements. There's no hole there, but there's two of these three different posts. I have three different wedges here. I have a 56 sand wedge, which is my most lofted club. Don't carry a 60. Then I have a 52 gap wedge, and then I have a 9 iron. So we're going to talk about how, how and when to use each of these clubs. But firstly, let's talk about the motion again. We want to have our lead arm straight in line with the shaft. We don't want to look like this with the shaft vertical. We're just going to rock the club back and through without using the wrist. So most people want to do this or this to try to help the ball into the air. We also want to turn our toes in toward the target like this. What does that do? It turns our hips into the correct impact position because we don't want to be doing this when we chip. Since we have such a small swing, we just want to already be there. So you should look something like this. And then lastly, when we swing through, we do not want to release this wrist or these wrists and, and finish like this or even like this. We want to finish with this angle here. We want to hold that all the way through the stroke. So that ensures that you make the best contact every time. So. You can practice that for a while without a ball and learn to move the club with your body. Your elbow will be touching your stomach, or it could be. It should at least be tucked in close there, and we want it all to move together. We don't want the arms moving independently of the chest like this. We want it moving. You see the whole chest? So if I have this elbow pinned on my body, I've got to move my body to move the club. That way I won't be doing this. Okay, so that's enough about the stroke. Uh, if you watched my original video, you already picked up on that. So now let's talk about the strategy. Now, I would also say that I'm only about six feet off the green and if you prefer to putt from there, by all means putt. Uh, I'm just doing this for a demonstration. If we play a real golf, don't move our ball around sometimes there's going to be a reason why we need to chip it so we're going to talk now about using different clubs for different shots rather than the same club all the time when I ask uh, people in our schools why would we use for example to that far post down there why would we use the nine iron rather than the sand wedge well, people say, well, because you want to get it rolling. You want it to roll up there. And I say, well, why do you care? If I can hit it close to the sandwich, why do I care if it rolls or goes through the air? Both of them are close. And they usually don't know the answer. So they know they've been told all their life, roll the ball up there, but they don't know why. So I'm going to explain why. And it's about the mishit. The smaller of swing we can take for each shot gives us two positives. 
One is you're more likely to be successful with it or hit a good shot with a smaller swing. And two, if you miss hit it, it won't be disastrous. Yes. So that's the explanation of why we use different clubs. So now we need to figure out, well, how, how do we know how to play the shot? Well, I'm gonna say first is when possible, and it almost always is, plan to land your ball onto the green. And I don't mean right here. I mean five, six, seven feet onto the green when you have room. Why is that? I see so many people, they wanna land it just on the green and they hit it just a little bit short. It hits here in the fringe and it stops or it barely trickles onto the green. I wanna land it in a safer area that if I hit it too easy or too hard, it still hits on the green. We want it to land on the green because we can more accurately predict the bounce we're gonna get. Wherever you are, however far away from the green you are, you want to land the ball on the green in a safe distance onto the green. So that will change what club you need to use depending on how far you are from the green and how far away the hole is from the edge of the green. We would not always use the same club from say right here for each of those three positions. So on the first one, we're going to use the more lofty club. A general rule is with a 56 sand wedge and no, ex no unusual circumstances, the shot will be one part carry, one part roll. So you can land it approximately halfway to the hole and it should turn out. So let's try that here. And my landing area should be somewhere. I'm gonna put a ball over here. Somewhere in that my landing area should be somewhere near that ball. And the reason I put it a little more than halfway is because that's a slight uphill landing area. So we'll talk about that in a minute. So we're gonna set up the way I just showed you. We're square, we've got our arms extended. We're gonna turn on our, spin on our heels. Now all we're gonna do is rock straight through with, with our arms extended. We don't wanna be like this because you can do that and hit it fat. We wanna. You don't, they don't have to be stretched out as hard as you can, but we want them fully extended. Then all you have to do is maintain your height to avoid mishitting the shot. So we're gonna, we're gonna sweep this through with hands ahead. And land the ball somewhere in that vicinity. And I'm very happy with that chip. It's, a, it's one foot. So let's try that one more time. I want to now give you the face-on view for that. So the face-on view of the same shot. Ball in the middle, then on the heels. Now it looks like it's way back. Straight line. Move our body, not just our arms and hands, like this. Finish like this. Let's do that one more time. How do we control how far we hit it? By how much backswing we take. And here I froze this frame because I wanted you to see what chipping impact should be like. The club shaft has not caught up yet with the lead arm. And yeah, so I'll give you a view of that. The one just short is the first ball and the one up against it is the second ball. So we're gonna go now to the, the second post from the same position here. I'm gonna choose the gap wedge this time. Why is that? Because I need the ball to go farther and I don't wanna take a bigger swing with the sandwich. I could, and I'm pretty good with it. I could probably hit it close. But if I miss hit it, it's going over the green. We all know that. I'll demonstrate that for you in just a minute. Take the 52 gap wedge the ratio of carry and roll should be a little different with this. It'll be more like one part carry and two parts roll or somewhere close to that. So we can almost take the same swing we just took with the short one. So I'm gonna estimate that one third of the way to that, and it's from your ball, not from the edge of the green. So one third of that would be short of that first post. And let's see how that works out. Same technique, same everything. Nice straight line. 
Doesn't take any great skill to do this. Okay, so it rolled out perfectly. Let's try that one more time. We stand up straight, stand on our heels, sit up with this straight line, hands ahead, turn our chest and our body. Well, I don't know about you, but those are two good chips because that's about 35, 40 feet. It's the same exact motion I just made on the first one. So now let's talk about the third one. I want to use the nine. Probably maybe could use a pitching wedge too. And the carry to roll ratio is going to be different. Let's assume one part carry, three parts roll. So again, we can carry it almost to the same place and it's going to roll to that third post. So let me get over here out of the way of the, the other post and see how this works out. Same setup. Everything's the same, same little swing. Let's see what happens here. Holy cow, look at that. It was so easy and it's the exact same thing I did with the short chip there. So learn to pick your club. Same, we'll do that one more time. One part carry, three parts roll. It's probably a little strong there. So the technique of using different clubs to chip with is very valid. So the one last thing I wanted to show was in order to get this ball to that last post down there, I've got to carry it halfway at least, which is a much bigger swing. So let's see if I can do that reasonably well with the, with the wedge. Same setup, same everything. It's just going to be longer swing. Decent, not great, but if I take the same swing and I blade it, well, we've all done that. Over the green, into the bunker, into the ditch, whatever's back there. So that's the biggest reason why we use different clubs for different chip shots. So while we're at this, I want to move on to uphill and downhill wise and how to plan those. It's very similar. You just have to allow for the trajectory of the ball off of these uphill and downhill lies.